Shalom, Yasharala. It's your brother, Elder T. Heyman, the Hebrew. Um, just um, out on location here in, in my neck of the woods, in my region. And I just wanted to uh, record this and try to get a little bit of the footage. We are celebrating the Feast of Weeks, the First Fruits slash Pentecost. 2017 and uh, me and the family uh, come out and uh, camping and we just read we went through uh, read some scriptures We're getting ready to I'm getting ready to blow the trumpet uh, it's a wonderful time I just I'm just really blown my mind is blown because I I read in first Corinthians chapter 12 when it talks about you know the many members of the body yet it's one body and how we all need each other and uh, what I just, I'm just so grateful and thankful that, um, you know, as I understand this and, you know, you talk about first fruits and how, how we, how Christ is the first fruits and we are the first fruits after, after that unto the most high, you know, so it's Christ and then we at, at, at his appearing at the resurrection um, and those who live to a, you know, and believe in a lively hope. So, let me just, I'm going to kind of just pan the, the camera around so you can kind of get a view of what I'm actually looking at. I'm sitting up here on a hill. If I zoomed out there, not much you can see. You know, camera though, you can't really see it, but, you know, there's a distance of probably about a mile or two miles or so. All right. And uh, so I just wanted to just just kind of capture some of the thoughts. Um, me and and uh, the family, you know, just had a Bible study. We prayed in, and uh, we out here and we reading the word. And uh, there's some people uh, the campsites that heard the word, and you know, it just talks about how us as as the children of light, brothers and sisters, that we must endure all the way to the end. And um, you know. The enemy always trying to put obstacles and hindrances and roadblocks and obstacles. Uh, I think I might have said that twice. In our paths to try to to discourage us and try to stop us from moving forward. But we just got to keep pushing. And I'm going to read the last thing. So I read, today we went into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I mean it's powerful brothers and sisters. And then we went to 1 Peter's chapter one all right and um when you go into the scriptures and the scriptures begin to just manifest and speak to you i mean you can see the hand of the most high at work in your hand uh, in your hands pardon me see the hand of the most high at work in your life it really does it just makes you feel so grateful and so thankful to the father all right, but let me go. Let me let me read this really quick. We talked about this. Uh, let me back this thing out. So I'm not sure if this is. Yeah, it was something. I'm sorry. So First Peter's one and we read all of it. It's all powerful. So this was the message to the elect, right? And we go in and we read from four that. As a matter of fact, let me read three. Blessed be the Almighty and Father of our power, of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. You know what I'm saying? He's begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yeshua, Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. So we have an inheritance. And when you think about inheritance, what you have as an inheritance, that is something that is passed down to you. Okay? I don't know. Okay. So we have an inheritance that was given to us. And look what it says. It's incorruptible. It can never tarnish. Right? 
and undefiled and that fade is not away so it can never fade away <laughs> and it's reserved in heaven for you you hear that brothers and sisters who are kept by the power of a higher for me Got an alarm clock going off right here sorry about that who are kept by the power of the most high right so as we are as we are being kept by the Father, and you know that you you are being kept by the Father, it says through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, so there was times where you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptations. Don't play around the card, please. So what we see is that brothers and sisters that when you're going through you know being chastened it, it seems like it never feels feels good at the time but we all know that we must endure and get through it because it serves a purpose and the purpose of it is this that let me, let me put this on here now you see that it's, it's highlighted that so if need to be you're in heaviness through the manifold temptations and temptation can come in all kind of ways. And when I speak of temptation or when the blessed scriptures speak of temptation, it means something or someone trying to tempt you and lure you away. Whether it be through uh, calamities or hard times, whether it be just for something, you know, uh, that could be lust or something that the desire after. It turns you out of the way from walking the path and the way that the Most High told you to walk. In other words, it turns you from being holy and set apart to just doing things that maybe the carnal mind would do. All right, so you got to fight against that. So that the trial, let's read verse seven. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that that perisheth. So gold perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor unto the end glory. At the appearing of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Yeshua, Yeshua the Messiah, whom having not seen, ye love him, and, and whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, right, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. All right? And we were just talking about this earlier, me and the congregation. In the family, it says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So this is speaking of that we would be be granted grace to us, and so grace is, you know, it's kind, it's uh, it's very generous, it's gracious, right? You being gracious to someone. But at the same time, it's giving you an opportunity to learn from your mistakes so that you can get it right. Because when that grace is up, in other words, why would, you, why would one need grace? Because the world that we have lived in has been polluted and corrupted. And so the Father, being the loving Father that He is, knew that He would, we've been, we've been again, begotten again. That's what it says. So when you look at that word begotten, let me go up there for a second because I got in the thought here. So when you're being begotten, that means you were brought back. You're the sons and daughters of the Most High by being begotten to this lively hope, right? I'm on uh, on 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 ten, right? But when it looked at when it says begotten, um, here it is right here. Let me get you the concordance for that begotten. All right. When it says begotten, <clears throat> oh look at it. This thing's acting up on me. I'm trying to see what the word begotten was. It's not now. I want to act up. Okay. I don't know why it's doing this. One more time.
Okay. Okay. Sorry, brothers and sisters. Um, this thing. So, in other words, begotten again. I don't know why this thing just all of a sudden when I hit the record button, want to kind of like freeze up on me. So I couldn't couldn't show you, or so that we can see with our own eyes here what it is. Let me go back down. So I'll I'll go go back to where I was. Right. So again. I think I let left off on All right. Um All right, hold on one second. Okay, family, I had to try to get this thing to work here. I wanted you to see that how <clears throat> this video would show what that. I wanted to make sure that I got in the word begotten. And when you look at it, it is the word, uh, the Greek, from the Greek, uh, it says G313. All right. And. It says Anaganel. Anaganel. All right. And it means to produce again, be born again, born anew. Right? Mataf, to have one's mind change so that he lives. What? That he lives a new life and one conform to the will of the Most High. And let us continue. So, if we were to leave off on here, I think I talked about, I forgot what I said when the verse it was. Let me just go to where it's highlighted at. So now, that the trial of your faith, I think it's on 6 or 7, you're going through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yeshua HaMashiach. Right? And we read right here, whom have not seen, right? You didn't see him physically yet. Verse 8. Oh, way down. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom, though though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So because you believe in him, and you've been born again to a lively hope, your life has changed and it conformed to the will of the Father, it's even going to the saving of your souls. But what was so powerful, how I thank the Most High, because every time that I read His Word and get encouraged when I prayed in first and He answered my prayer here on the spot and gave us understanding and the increase, and I received a deposit into my soul. So no one cannot tell me that the Most High doesn't exist, that He doesn't answer prayers, and that His hand's not at work in my life. You know? He's doing things every day that just amazes me and blows my mind. And uh, when you go into 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the body and the many members, how he puts some in the, uh, in the church, the first apostles and prophets. And here we're reading about how the prophets right here in, in 1 Peter is searching what manner of time that the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things so now the prophets were ministering to us a prophet is and you look up the word a prophet someone that was moved especially a prophet of the most high is moved by the holy spirit to uh, speak things uh, that haven't happened 
to to actually happen. So you know, not only that, but it's speaking the oracles. Let me just get it to, give give it to you really quick. All right, I like to just show what I'm talking about, so that way you can you can see if it be the Most High's will. Um, see what I see. All right. So I'm going to hold this here and come back to First Peter 1 and 12 and go to 1 Corinthians. Where are we at? 1 Corinthians 12. And I think it was verse 25, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay. Oh, here it's verse 28. I need to highlight this too. I need to highlight all of this phone reacting up okay so here we go we're gonna get the breakdown of look at it's doing it again see Wait one second I'm gonna stop it okay so here we go so overseeing the the word the breakdown of profit all right and it's from the Greek G forty three ninety ninety six Okay. Hold on. Now it says in the Greek writings. Let me go out here too so we can get some of the, the footage here. I'm trying to record a little bit more here. Okay, so it says here in the Greek writing interpreter of oracles or of other hidden things. One but two, one who moved by the spirit of Ahia and hence his organs or spokesmen solemnly declares to men what he has received by inspiration, especially concerning future events and in particular such as relate to the cause and kingdom of Ahia and to man's, man's kind salvation. That's what I wanted you brothers and sisters to see. All right. So when I go back to first Peter's. Peter 1, and I believe I was on 12, okay, or 11, it says, uh, look, at, look at these phones, they just be acted out, I didn't tell this phone to do nothing, of 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So when you see 11 and 12, unto whom it was revealed, let me just go down right down to here. Now, it tells us this. Wherefore, in verses 13, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yeshua Christ. 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust and your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. All right? And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. That means reverence the Most High. All right? So I'm going to just jump on down. You can continue to read all, you, you know, read these yourself. But I just wanted to make this very important because seeing ye have, and in and, and 1 Peter 1 22, it says this, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. That means you have a real love for your brothers and sisters, the brothers and sisters in the truth, that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Ahia, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh, not some, not a little, not half, all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. So no matter how one builds up in, in this earth that we live in here now how wealthy they become how successful they become according to this world standard it's as the blade of grass and it will wither away but the word of the most high which we just read right 
by the word of the Most High, which liveth and abideth forever. Okay? So we see here, but the word of the Most High endureth forever. And, and that's what it is. Okay? And so when we see here, but the word of the Most High endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So there we have it, family. Let me go over here for a second and get a little bit of footage. Okay. Got the kids out, and, you know. We see out here we got, got Terrain out here doing it live you know what I'm saying what's that there Terrain? Oh, oh, it's steakums so we got some, we got, <laughs> got some steakums right there you know what I mean well done no blood no blood we cook it you know what I mean and giving thanks to the Most High for blessing us with the means to, again, you know, brothers and sisters, uh, this family, this ministry has been very transparent on, you know, as we're going through it, you receiving it real time. As the Spirit gives it to us, we're just sharing with our brothers and sisters because we know that we're not the only ones that go through, you know, tough and difficult times. But no matter what, we continue to praise the Most High. May His praise be continually in our mouths. So... You see us out and, you know, we got the water in the background, the campsite all set up. I mean, we're getting ready to, you know, bump some truth music. We've been bumping truth music out here. But I just wanted to get you, you know, show you how we're doing it, you know what I mean? And uh, we've been eating in the spirit, feeding our souls with the word of the Most High. And just, you know, it being the time for the Feast of, of Weeks, we're coming to give our, our offering to the Father. I'm very grateful and thankful. Brother in the faith in here. Get the, the champion. Take a look at the champion real quick. See if we can get a little. <laughs> he looks funny. Hey, buddy. Oh, man. I got a little bit of foot, footage and stuff. Okay. So, you know. It just. Nice though, you probably can't get all of that right there. I'm not gonna walk all the way down there, but I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful day. Just pardon me, excuse me. Oh, it's not by the camera. Oh, let's see, we. We like to show the brothers and sisters and stuff how, how it's going down. You know, I put this on. We gotta go somewhere. Keep the sacrifice of prayer. But you got you brothers and sisters to stay tuned. And you're gonna keep doing it live and doing it real big. And just chowing down and having a good time. Blow the chisel up in, in a bit before the sun go down. You know to start the feast of weeks, and it's just a beautiful day. You know we in the spirit. We stay in the spirit. Always in the spirit. Thank the Father for His hedge of protection. Yeah, for the the manifold blessings that He has bestowed upon us, and it's so good. I, I, I love all of my brothers and sisters. You know, I'm hearing uh, you know the truth music, and it's just I'm so inspired. I mean, Brother Fred did a powerful powerful song, um, you know, to the most high, most high protect my mind from evil, got Brother Bronze, and I was looking on here that he did a song called One Accord, and, uh, you know, I mean, it goes on and on, I mean, you know, I'm just grateful for all of the brothers and sisters who walk and operate in the spirit and show the fruits of the spirit, and that's what we have to do, because why? We are going to be the examples brothers and sisters so I want you to know I want to say it from your brother here you know Elder T him on the Hebrew you know I love you all family and I pray that you know 
that you continue to endure, that you continue giving the Most High the praise, continue being a doer of the word, you know. Go out there and, and, and just, you know, make it happen. Keep enduring. Just be, in, be empowered, be uplifted, and encouraged in the faith today and always, you know. Because the kingdom of heaven is in you. So, that's all I wanted to say, brothers and sisters. For the feast, for the feast of weeks, 2017, first fruits and Pentecost, my dearly beloved, the members of the body of Hamashiach, your brother in the faith of the T.A. Mind Hebrew, I blow the trumpet one time for Yasharala and for the members of the body of Christ. I'm gonna set this right here. As you, I think I'm gonna set it here. <laughs> now I think so. Right there. As you see, you got the, the sun's getting ready to go down, mm -hmm. so I want to give all praise to the Most High for allowing us to be able to partake in, you know, the Feast of Weeks and First Fruits and to bring forth, this, uh, bring forth good praise to the Most High. But here I go. I'm going to sound off the trumpet. wonderful experience. It's just so amazing partaking in the Most High's holy days and how He's blessed our family. I want to just say many, many years ago, and some of you may have heard this, I remember I was back in, they would call when the church was in the church, and I asked the Father, what are your, what are the true holy days? And I mean, that had to be, as I think back, maybe eight or nine years ago, and to be able to find out what the days, what they, what they signify, what they really mean, it really does, you know, put things in perspective. So as you see that sun going down, and we're looking looking down and it's just it's going down so we're just partaking in it and and you all get a chance to experience it but I know what it means for me personally I mean have my family my whole family we walking in the truth you know as for me and my house we will serve the most high and we'll continue to bless him and continue to grow and learn so it's for the body for every member of the body of Christ truth transcends across borders all right, and so that's what I want to. That's the word that I would give to our brothers and sisters. Continue to press in and seek the face of the Most High. I'll blow it one more time. One more time. So here I'm looking off to the east here, and of course you see the sun in the background. It's just about down, but I want to see if we can get it just right. You see the horizon right there. I know that's a big hill right there, but it's going down. So I'm gonna get ready to blow and take a breath. Father, give me the breath, Most High. Mm -hmm. So we blow the trumpet, Most High, to the gathering of people will be when Shiloh comes, the anointed Messiah. <laughs> that was a good one. Now you hear the echoes going through the, through the hills and stuff. So for the set-apart feast, another one. Another one, and I know I'm grateful. I know my family, we're all thankful. I mean, the kids, are, I mean, they're growing up in the truth. And uh, it's the generation, we were turning back to the Father. And so now it's time for the, it went down, it's time for the, you can still see a little bit of light, but light past I mean, look at how that light just, I don't know if the camera can catch that, but when I'm looking at over there, I mean, that's beautiful, just watching the horizon, looking at everything, the set. You can just see, like, the light coming down. It's tight. And uh, no, no greater feeling than being filled with the Holy Spirit. In the spirit of gratitude and thanks, thanksgiving. All praise be to Ahaya, Bahashem, Yeshaya, Wawar, Wap, Kadash. We love you, family. Salah and armor up.
Shalom. All right, so we're on the way back from our outing for the Feast of Weeks, First Fruits slash Pentecost, and it was a joyous and blessed time. My brother Elder T. Heyman, he drew. Just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of footage of the scenery. You kind of see out right there. What they call his awesome lives in his snake, and um, we're just traveling through the outskirts and uh, you know making our way back back home. So we're trying to play some good praise music, but what do you know with these uh, these phones here and up here in the hills, not able to get any uh, any reception. So okay, now you see us going getting ready to check out of our campsite or the camping grounds. Let's see what it is, right? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Get that picture right there, John. You miss it. You get it? I got some of it. All right. Did you get mom? Mom's back there. Say hi, Michelle. Stop it. All praise. All praise is going up, right, Michelle? All praise is. My allergies are acting up right now. So. Her allergies are acting up right now. I told her to rebuke you. Right? Right, brothers and sisters. So here we are. We got about a, I don't know, about 45 minutes hour strike. We got Aaron in the front, he pushing, he and, he and the expo moving. Last time, the last time we went out, um, was Peace of Tabernacles, in 2016, I believe. And so, you know, the same area, it was just a good time to just kind of get away from it all. And just, I mean, for me today, personally, my experience, you know, I read, as you see in here, we went, or we read together as a congregation, we read 1 Corinthians 12, First Peter's uh, one, two, and three, and it's just been a joyous time. I mean, when you just you're on one accord, and just in the spirit, and just being the outpouring of the spirit, it's amazing. The kids have fun, we had fun. We even got you know Samson, the, the funky, the ruthless pit. All right, and um, he kept all the coyotes and everything at bay. Last night we heard the coyotes out there howling and. You know, so I want to hit pause for a brief moment, and then we'll come back more, and we'll be back shortly with more of the road trip, um, celebrating the feast of uh, fruits or the feast of weeks slash Pentecost. All right, loved ones, shalom. Uh, you see the rolling hills. Our ears are popping. We're coming down to his hill. Uh, we're just getting a little bit of the footage, a little bit of scenery, so you can get a view of what we're looking at. Go ahead and put it out there. We're on this little thin old road right here. We're having a very good day. Right, Rianne? Hey, Bless day. You know, we're giving all praises to the Father. Yep, all the hills and everything. 